Okay, so we've had some fun. Oh, we did our little trick. So let's move on to something more uh, mobile. In other words, this is very static and was interesting, but now it's actually talking about wet versus dry. So let's actually back the heck up a moment. Let's put all that crap aside. Let's just talk about what makes something look wet or dry. And we'll do this just by very simply, we're gonna go in and make a torus. Okay, torus. Now, here's our torus, not very exciting. Let's actually make it nice and smooth, like making it a, let's say an herbs torus. Let's zoom in on this puppy and just take a look at what we get by default. If you just render this guy with nothing at all, what's he look like? Answer is going to be boring. So we're gonna do two things here while we're waiting for that to pop up. Uh, let's go ahead and throw down two shaders. One's gonna be a clay shader. By the way, this is what it looks like. Eee. Yeah, that came off computer screen. There's a clay, sh a clay shader and let's say something with some bump map, like a stone shader. Okay, why do we care about that? Let's call this a dry torus. And let's give him the uh, clay shader. And let's throw down a three point light. Let's just have some light on the scene. That actually looks a little insanely bright. So three point light, by the way, is kind of cool just for a quick way of making lights look like lights. But let's, uh, it tends to be kind of bright by default. So let's bring the, the key light down to half and then the rim and fill lights down to like, you know, point two, something like that. Okay, so looking at that here, that looks mildly interesting. Let's see what it looks like in the actual render world. Okay, yeah, that's boring. But boring's fine. That's a dry guy, right? Let's even give him a, a color. By the way, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to call this Taurus. Taurus. Light. Light. And the reason I'm going to do that is because we're going to go into here. I'm going to put a light mask on. Since we're going to have a couple things in the scene, I just want this guy lit by this and kind of nothing else. Similarly, I want this light to just do, uh, its shadows should really be, like say we're going to do ray trace shadows, its shadows should just be uh, other Taurus stuff. So let's go ahead and do that with all our uh, shadows on our lights. And, whoops. And uh, why do we care? Because we've got those other things in the scene, and I'm not getting rid of this stuff, but because uh, we're going to use that a little bit later. But I want to have uh, something to start with. Okay, so I'm going back to our materials. Here's our, what happened to it? Our clay shader. Uh, let's turn the point color off, and there's our guy. Still looks pretty dull. Let's go ahead and give him just a like a color, like a light, I don't know, gray, green, blue, something like that. How about a teal Taurus? Yeah, just so there's something going on. Okay, so let's say this is our dry Taurus. This is where we're going to float in that tank. So next question is, what makes wet things look wet? Uh, it really depends on what the thing is that's getting wet, obviously. In this case, let's say this is like a plastic guy or something. Usually, the first thing that, if you went through a lot of reference and looked at stuff, the first thing to notice is tiny, uh, broken up um, specular highlights tend to make things look wet. Things tend to get darker when they're wet. They, they tend to have more little uh, specular lights from different, you know, miniature regulators in the surface. So that's why I put this stone guy down. Let's talk about the stone shader for a second. We want to have um, where are we? Dunk, 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 dunk. See this little stone pattern here? They, by default, let's actually make a new torus that's going to be our wet torus. This guy will have, turn that guy off, this will be our wet torus. Wet torus. And this wet torus we're going to put the stone shader onto. Now, by default, it's going to be very bumpy and craggly and not anything looks like wet at all. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of reduce the craziness of it a little bit. 
uh, by messing around with this a little bit. Well, here we can see it. E looks like a surface of the moon, right? Okay, so let's take this pepper roughness, take that down all the way. Let's take its bump amplitude down to like, say, half. And let's take this frequency way lower, like uh, blip, 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 blorp, blorp, to about that, let's say. Okay, there's other things you can mess around, like this dirt stuff and so forth, which I don't even know if we need uh, that much for this. I'm just going to leave that alone for now. But the thing I want to talk about now is go up here to uh, diffuse. And let's bring this diffuse down, like to about this much. This is where we say, you know, it's darker. This other guy uh, is kind of this overall lighting thing. Let's bring him down as well. And let's have the color. Remember, this is supposed to be our our wet version of this torus. Let's go ahead and make him the same base color. You could actually link those up if you wanted to. Okay, over in the Reflect tab, we're going to reflect lights, but the specular intensity, we want to jack that puppy up. So we're going to have really bright, tight specular highlights. This guy, specular angular, specular angle, well, that's hard to say. Let's take him down like five. Okay, we've made a lot of changes. We should probably render something once in a while to see what we're doing. All this do, does is basically take our moonlight torus, right? And you can see we've reduced the amplitude a little bit, but left some of the color in. But the interesting thing, the real reason I wanted to grab this stone guy is we have a bunch of little broken up kind of highlights, little bits and pieces of stuff. To me, that kind of says wet. As a matter of fact, I would say you could even go a little bit darker with this guy, like on his base color. Let's go ahead and bring him down a little bit. And then the other thing that's interesting, this is why we do a three point lights here. It has a couple different highlights. Let's actually make another light just for highlights like here's our torus light right let's go ahead and copy that and i'm going to call this torus spec light and this is basically going to be another guy another set of three lights except we'll we'll like rotate it so it's totally different and off and whatever we'll just do just rotating the heck out of it to get it so it's coming from a different angle let's have these guys all just just affect the specular. Okay, so I'm going to go through all these lights and say they just do specular things. Just does. Oh, well, that's not nice. sorry. I like that. Um, as a matter of fact, by default, I think the fill light doesn't affect the specular. Let's have that happen too. So this should be interesting. Let's take a look and see what that does. This is uh, going to be. There we go. We made things darker, but we have more lights. So we're hoping to see more uh, light hits. And we do see on that edge, I'm going to rotate this guy too far. Now we're seeing him there. See, we have these other lights there. Yeah, there's more highlights. They're almost, I'd say, a little too cray-cray. Let's bring those guys back a little bit. I went a little nuts, I guess. Let's bring him back so they're off, but they're off by, like, some angle like that. And let's also bring these other guys down. Um, maybe these are our kind of half specker guys. So what are we doing? We're basically simulating the idea that there's, you know, in the real world, there's lots of light sources from uh, light bouncing off of different objects or coming from different places and so forth. And on a diffuse dry thing, that all kind of mixes together. You don't see it, but on a wet thing, you get a lot of hot little spotlights. So that's more fun. We got a guy there and we got a spotlight here. What else did we get? I got a little bit of a guy there. And you can move this around a little bit. In any case, so that's what I would say looks wetter. Again, not perfect. And if this was a different character, like a furry character, uh, it would not be as, you know, it would look different and have other textures and stuff. And these little dots and stuff are also kind of rendering errors because uh, this is just interactive rendering. It's lower. If you did a high res, uh, higher pixel samples render, it would look a lot nicer. But anyway, so this is... I'm just going to say that's our wet one, that's our dry one. So now we've got a dry shader and a wet shader. So now we're going to, on our next lesson, we're going to put together the stuff we just learned before with the uh, our new wet point shader, to, and we'll combine it with an actual two different shader, wet dry shader. So this is kind of where we're putting it all together. Uh, so come back for lesson nine.